Hey everyone, so in the last video I showed you how to make your own Badenoff mask, but I also alluded to that there's other masks that you might want to consider. So in this video today I'm going to cover all three focusing masks and why you might want to pick one or the other. So the first one we're going to talk about is the Badenoff mask. Tried and true, this is a very common mask that you'll see a lot of telescope makers uh, suggest, and it works great for finding focus. The concept being is that the lines on it create a diffraction spike that basically creates this cross with a center line. And the idea being is that you align that center line to basically get focus. It works really well, and it's pretty universal on all telescopes. And I dropped on the floor. So here we see it in practice where I've focused on Jupiter in this photo and I have a large X diffraction spike and then a center line that I have basically set so that it is in between the X pattern and this is a perfect focus. A more recent design is called the carry mask and the carry mask actually works using a 10 and 12 degree angle diffraction spikes that uh, you basically align on your star to get really precise focus. The Carey mask was developed by George Carey from geoastro.co.uk and here in this example you can see that it's out of focus and as we switch over to my second example here it is in focus and it becomes very clear that it's in focus or not especially if you use a camera where you can overexpose the diffraction spikes all the way to the edge of the frame. And the final mask I have today is the tri Batnoff mask, which basically has three Batnoff mask designs in one mask. And this one here creates a prolifera of spikes. And the concept there is that it doesn't not only help you with focus, but also helps you with collimation. But you're really going to want a bigger one if you're going to look at collimation. So here we have the tri Badenoff mask where it is clearly out of focus and you can see that the lines don't align at all. And then when we switch over to a shot that's in focus, it makes a very distinct star pattern and it is very easy to see that yes, it's in focus and yes, this telescope is collimated. So the real question then becomes which focusing mask do you use for which scenario or actually which focusing mask do you use for which telescope because I find that is more of a selling point than anything. So here's an image of Jupiter with uh, a couple of its moons and what this shows is that all three masks are very good at nailing focus and if you want to pick one mask over the other it's partly a personal decision but it's also partly based on which telescope you're going to use as they each have their own advantages and disadvantages. So if you're using a regular refractor um, a Badenoff mask works perfectly if you're using something that is for astrophotography and you really need to nail focus down, um, then you might want to consider getting a carry mask. Um, these tend to do quite well and they allow you to have a little bit cleaner focus. I'm not going to say that it is that much of a step over a Batonoff mask, but definitely gives you a clear signal if you're using a camera or something else where you can really elongate those spikes to see which ones are closer in focus. And if you're using like a Newtonian or a Smith Castle grain or anything that you can sort of collimate or falls out of collimation more often, then obviously the last choice is our tri Batonoff mask because you can collimate and focus at the same time. And given that you have three of these, um, you do end up getting a very good signal and you can, you know, rotate it around and make sure that your collimation is perfect 360 degrees. Now, of course, if you have something small like this, it works. If you get a larger one, um, especially larger scopes where um, getting collimation can be a little bit more difficult and you have that center obstruction. Um, so you can go in there and actually turn like the bob knobs or whatever you have so that you can actually correct that collimation with the mask on. So those are the three focusing masks I have for you for this video. If you know of another focusing mask that I should consider testing, please leave me a comment down below and I will uh, definitely explore that and share it with everybody. And I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.